Before I begin, I would like for everyone to take a good look at me. By show of hands, how many of you here think I'm European? Nobody? <laughs> Asian? Yeah, it's pretty obvious, right? <laughs> now, next, I'm going to try to smile to the best of my ability. And take a look at me again. But I do apologize in advance if it creeps you out because I'm not very good at this. <laughs> so here goes. <laughs> Thank you. By another show of hands, how many of you think that I was happy when I smiled? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Nervous? Yeah, you would be nervous too if you were standing right here. <laughs> okay, for this last one, all right? Fi final one, I promise. But for this one, I want you to clap super loudly and cheer, if you agree, all right? Super loudly so that ASU Tempe, no, ASU Polytechnic and Mesa can hear us, okay? <laughs> How many of you here think I'm beautiful? That's it. That's my talk. Good night. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So the reason for this informal polling is I also asked the machine the same questions. And like you, the machine thinks I'm Asian. It also thinks I'm happy when I smiled. But the chance of whether I'm attractive or not is pretty much a coin toss. I know, this machine is terrible. <laughs> and to prove that it's a terrible liar, I also asked the machine which celebrity I most resemble. It turns out that there's a 40% chance that I may be the Filipino Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Aside from being the Filipino Ryan Gosling, I'm also a researcher that studies machine or artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is just any type of machine that finds patterns in data. And by data, I mean not just those facts that are not naturally represented by numbers, such as credit scores or housing prices, but it can be anything that can be converted into numbers that a computer can understand. It can be tweets, Instagram photos, Yelp reviews. It could also be videos such as this TED Talk. Well, AIs are really cool because they help us perform tasks that we find repetitive, boring, or error-prone. For example, instead of typing in and trying to remember a six-digit passcode every time I want to unlock my smartphone, my phone now has a face recognition AI that detects my face and automatically unlocks my smartphone when it verifies that it's me. AIs also perform a lot of tasks that we need to do super quickly and very effectively because of severe social consequences. An example of this is fingerprint matching in criminal investigations. Now, because of the many benefits of using artificial intelligence, a lot of researchers in my field focus on making AIs make better decisions by predicting better. And they do this by designing faster and more effective algorithms, which are just really a bunch of instructions that a computer follows to find patterns in data. But I'm personally interested in another way of making machine or artificial intelligence better. I study how to make machines more fair. And what I mean by fair is that a machine should predict equally well or equally poorly for everyone, regardless of whether you're black or white, young or old, male, female, or whatever your gender identity is. In the simplest of language, I'm interested in designing machines that are unbiased across social groups. Now, to begin to understand why this is even an issue, let's try to comprehend that machine that said I'm only half attractive. How did that machine learn the concept of human attractiveness when it shouldn't have tastes or preferences to begin with? I mean, it's a machine, right? Well, the more likely chances this machine was shown photos of attractive and non-attractive people. 
Then it was given an algorithm to find patterns of similarities in the faces of people who were attractive and those who were not. For example, it may find that a more symmetric face tends to rate higher in the attractiveness scale. By learning what patterns in people's faces make them attractive or not, this machine is now able to predict attractiveness for people it has never seen before, like me. Now, this is the reason why I'm asking these very important questions that traditionally have only been asked about humans. Do machines have biases? Because when you think about it, who teaches machines how to find patterns in data or images? Us, by writing algorithms. Who teaches machines who is attractive and who is not? Humans, by annotating our own judgments of attractiveness into photos or images of people. And finally, who selects the data or images that get shown to the machine so that it may find persistent or salient patterns? Again, it's us, humans, because it's us who choose the data that gets fed into algorithms. Do we now, as humans, transfer our biases to a machine because it's us who teach it how to learn, how to judge, and it's us who choose what type of data it experiences? The answer is yes. And we can transfer our biases in several ways. And the easiest way to design a biased machine is to only show it data from a specific social group, say a specific race. So for example, by restricting a machine to learn only about Asian faces is the easiest way I can design a machine that will predict really well for Asian people, but very poorly for Caucasians and African Americans. And so what we've found is that when a machine experiences more diversity and richness in the data that it learns patterns from, the more fair or less biased it becomes. Now think about that for a second. That is a fundamentally human trait, don't you think so? That our capacity to be accepting and inclusive of other people who do not belong to our own social groups or who do not share our ideals is highly dependent on the diversity of people that we've met in our lives. I grew up in Asia, where being a dark-skinned female is stigmatized as unattractive. I'm considered fairly dark-skinned, at least for an Asian female. So if a machine only experiences data on attractiveness based on Asians' definition of female beauty, my attractiveness rating is probably going to be much worse than 50%. But when I first came here to the States, I had many people telling me that they think that the color of my skin is very pretty. Two different societies two very different perceptions of beauty that a machine can learn. And so as we move forward in improving and designing machine and artificial intelligence, we should think about two things, diversity and inclusivity. Because machines, they learn from us in the same way that children learn from their parents. They can adopt our biases. And in the same manner that we teach our children that beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, we should also teach a machine that there are many definitions of beauty. Thank you. <laughs>